Bradley Thomas, and this is The Art of Changing Your Life with the Take the Road to Freedom Summit. And today, my guest is Laura House, an international dating coach, flirting expert, MTV's Made It Girl mentor, lifestyle author, and has been featured on several different shows. Today's show, E! News, Good Morning America, Nightline and Glamour, and also Ask Men. Welcome, Laura. How are you? Thank you. I'm fantastic. Yeah, and... I'm bringing you know a wide variety of people to to this summit and trying to spread my message of if you know your purpose in life, you can go much further faster, make decisions faster, um, date the right people, um, and just really have a much more enjoyable, purposeful, led life. So let's kind of jump into to your story and and how you became a, a dating coach and and how you found your purpose. So it's interesting when it comes to purpose. It's one of the first things that I say to new clients, what's your dating purpose? Because there are generally three purposes, to have fun, to expand yourself, and to be in a committed monogamous relationship. Um, so in terms of me and finding my purpose, my road has been a little bit... Um, cobbled together, as my dad likes to say. I've, I've done a lot of things. My fifth book was just recently published by Running Press called Screwing the Rules, The No Game's Guide to Love. And that really dug me into the dating space. But I haven't always been so focused on dating, which is why one of the things we're going to talk about later of finding your focus is so essential. So I've been actually, I consider myself to be a writer by trade because I have been a writer for the last 17 years. I was writing for magazines like Fit Magazine, Fit Yoga, Playboy, Men's Journal, FHM, I mean really just all over the place covering things that I liked to do and if because I started writing at 21 years old what am I an expert in well uh, I guess I'm an expert in sex and <laughs> travel fitness, beauty. So I started writing about those things that I considered myself to be an expert in and then became an expert through interviewing other people and writing about it prolifically. I sold my first book when I was 23 on stress reduction. I was just going through um, I had just finished going through my first divorce and had just gotten engaged and was about to get married for the second time. Um, so I knew about stress. I then went on to write another book um, on fitness a couple of years later and then an another fitness book and then a lifestyle book that was for chicks but it was everything. Quickie Chicks, Cheat Cheat to Life, Love, Food, <laughs> Fitness, Fashion, and Finance on a Budget. So I basically was like the everything girl um, and from there I started doing a lot of YouTube videos as an expert I was focusing at first my YouTube videos on fitness because that was what I really was known for I was an editor for fit magazine I, I did so much fitness writing so I started doing workouts that allowed you to work out in life because I knew that I wanted an edgy angle in general. I called them quickie workouts in bed. And they did <laughs> very, very well. It was me on a bed in shorts and a tank top working out. These were real legitimate exercises as if I was working out on a yoga mat. I just was on a bed which created more instability. So they were also very effective. But I also started to do videos on dating because at that point I had been now divorced twice, uh, engaged a third time and, and proposed to I think at that point like seven times. So I started giving dating tips and they were again quickie dating tips, really short. I extracted the message, I put it out there on YouTube and although those did, did, videos didn't get as many views as the quickie workouts in bed. I got more of a authentic response from people. They were emailing me asking for my advice. They wanted to know what to do with their lives. And I realized that I was giving advice pretty much full time for free, dating advice. So I started talking about me being a dating expert on Facebook, on Twitter, all over the place, and production companies started to contact me asking me if I would host reality TV shows as a dating coach. Um, the media, various forms of media, print, uh, radio, um, television, 
websites started contacting me asking for my expertise and I became I was quoted in a lot of different places now let me also just say my mom owns a PR firm and I was a publicist for a moment when I was 21 years old so I know very well how to sell myself and I do that in all of my videos in my books in my articles so I the whole time that I was building my various different brands I was also selling myself to the media and uh, appearing in the media no matter what it was if it was quickie chick that I was selling if it was a company that I had called green IQ for a short period of time which was an eco company I was able to get into the media so no matter what I was doing I was the go-to expert for a lot of media outlets but when I really found my focus of dating and decided that this is not only what I'm doing all day for free but it's also what I love to talk about that's when I decided I'm, I'm going to be a dating coach. I'm going to dig my heels into dating and into still the edgy component because I can't just be a dating expert. There are tons of us. I needed to create a distinct identity, and that was screwing the rules. Edgy. You know, yeah. I needed to be something that I needed to stick with the edgy. I wanted it to be female empowering and I also wanted the media to say wow this is different what does screwing the rules mean so I sold my fifth book and put that out videos been on t I'm on TV all the time I have at least one interview a day with some sort of a media outlet which is fantastic um, and 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 that was sort of the getting to the purpose of really I want to help people not make the mistakes that I've made and that's definitely in the dating world um, now I've been married and divorced twice engaged a third time proposed to nine times so I've made a lot of mistakes I've done a lot right obviously but I've also made a lot of mistakes and one of the most the biggest mistakes throughout all of those relationships is that I always I, I never was completely my authentic self um, I always wanted to be super Laurel instead of real Laurel and that was something that I learned was essential when I sold my last book and also in my YouTube videos with where I now talk about my own stories instead of just being the expert I have decided to be relatable aspirational so there's always that connection so it's that within the dating but then also my second purpose is helping other entrepreneurs so because I am excellent at being a media whore in the best possible sense that's something that I help other entrepreneurs with now too how to define and hone your concept and then really dig into that concept and then within that honing expand it so if it is getting into the media if it's selling yourself um, being your own publicist if it is creating a pitch for production companies I actually just finished shooting a pilot for a network to host a dating show um, if it's writing book proposals if it's getting an agent and selling that book to a publishing house so I help with all of these different levels of business to help other entrepreneurs do what I do because I've messed up many times when it comes to this to the business of business and that doesn't mean somehow the whole way I've been able to get a lot of press but I haven't <laughs> always monetized until really I developed screwing the rules and and dug into this dating angle so it's that's a very long answer to a short question um, but I'm trying to help the consumer who is single and struggling to to um, be authentic and find real true deep love and then to help other entrepreneurs be authentic and find success in whoring themselves out to the media. Yeah, I think um, what you said there, <clears throat> and I'm seeing a common theme with a lot of really successful people, is that one, they started out somewhere doing something, and they just really liked doing that. They didn't know exactly where it was going to lead them. Um, and it, there seems to be a common thread that comes up after a little while is that you tie it in somehow with helping people and yeah. that's where a lot of fulfillment comes in in, in in helping people and trying to find your purpose. Was there, was there a moment where that really hit for you and you're like, I just really want to help people? Um, 
you know, I think that a lot of it has been because of my sister. I have a younger sister. She's 10 years younger. And I was married for the first time at 21 years old. And when I got divorced at 22, um, I think I scared my sister uh, when it came to relationships. And when I got married for the second time at 23 and divorced at 27, I think she was even more freaked out about relationships. And I wanted, for her, I wanted to teach her and show her that it's not just about being loved, that it's about loving yourself first. And that was something that I really lacked. And um, and so I don't know if there was one defining moment of, oh, my God, I have to help people. Um, I think it's been a lot of little things. And, and just seeing, I, I mean, I had my very first client when it comes to dating coaching. We started with food and lifestyle coaching. I helped her to um, lose a lot of weight, uh, taught her how to shop. Uh, we went to farmer's markets, taught her how to cook healthy meals, how to get on an exercise program. She lost the weight, and she said, you know, I think I'm ready to date. And it had been, I think, 18 years since she had been on a date. And I wow. helped to create her online dating profile, and she got a date. And she went on a couple of dates, and she called me, and she said, okay, it's going really well. And, and I was coaching her through the, co the, the dating. And she said, and I think it's time that we're going to move forward and have oral sex. I don't know what to, I don't know how to do that. I don't know what to do. And I said, come over, bring a couple <laughs> of cucumbers, different sizes. And so I gave her some tips on how to give oral sex. A couple days later, oh my God, it was amazing. I think we're moving <laughs> on to sex. And I was like, I can't physically help you, but I can help you in giving you some oral tips and um, and she stayed with this guy for a very long time and she that was a moment also when I thought my advice works and and really seeing that transformation of her of the weight loss of the lifestyle adjustment that that really had an effect on me yeah, um, and a lot of little things, really. And, and let me also just mention because people might be wondering, I am sitting on a bed, um, so I have I have kept that element of the quickie workouts in bed because that is the edgy. It's also what people knew me for quickie chick, but also because it's relatable. You know, do you want to sit and take advice from someone on a YouTube channel who ha is sitting with a white wall behind them and it looks like they are in a sterile environment, maybe a therapist's office? Or do you want to talk to someone who has been there and done that, and um, and you know where where do you really open up? Where do you come vul become vulnerable? Oftentimes on a bed. So that's that's the reason behind the bed. Yeah, it all kind of ties together, and like my background ties in my my sense of adventure. And um, I'm actually not in the jungle right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but but I, I love what you said about, you know, helping your, your younger sister out. And my vulnerable moment, like right now in the interview, is like, I well, I'm not the younger sister. Um, I was supposed to be the younger sister, but I came out with extra parts, at least according to my brother, because uh, <laughs> I've got three older brothers. Um, uh and it, it's interesting that you said that and hearing it from your perspective of the bigger sister is that my brothers have gone through divorce and that has caused me to kind of hold back in relationships because I don't want to end up like that. I don't yeah. want to go I don't want to go down that road, you know, yeah. and I and I've crossed that bridge now where, you know, I've taken the step and, and things are going in the right direction now, but I didn't realize until I did some uh the some work, you know, on myself that oh that was actually holding me back. Right. And um, I think that's really cool that you, that you that you, you you were able to help your sister out like that because if she didn't see that or if she didn't know what was going on, um, it could have it could have been a subconscious thing for her um, yeah. that could have held her back for her life. You know, and that's how whatever. so many of my clients are as well. I mean, so many of us, all of us, put up some sort of a facade. 
So that facade is our protective layer so that people aren't going to see behind and see what's actually happening and who we are. We don't show our vulnerability because we're so afraid. But yeah. the thing is that vulnerability is what makes us lovable. It's not our always happy or so smart or so pretty and perfect. I mean, that might be attractive at first, but it's not what's going to keep someone. It's not going to what is going to make someone fall in love with you. And that's yeah. something that I had to learn and it's something that I teach and now I have clients all over the world um, I do video Skype with my clients I have clients in South Korea Dubai Paris Geneva actually right before this call I was on the phone with a client in Geneva who contacted me she's 57 she contacted me a year ago a very successful tough woman and said I'm ready to have the best year of my life I haven't dated in several years I'm ready for a relationship. I'm so afraid to open up. I'm so afraid to be vulnerable. I refuse to change my lifestyle. I don't want to let anyone in. I need you to help me. And yeah, I it's been an amazing experience. You know, I have I have women who are captains in the military, generals. Like these are women who are tough chicks. And they come to me because they know that yes, I'm, you know, I'm this blue-eyed blonde from LA, but I'm tough. <laughs> And I've been there, and I get you, and I will never judge you, but I will not couch. And I'm going to be honest and straightforward and direct, and I'm going to give you how-to advice. And my clients contact me like, I'm on a date. He just said this. How do I respond? Or, you no, know, <laughs> I just got this text, and I don't know what to do. Tell me exactly what to say. So my coaching is everything from loving yourself first. You know, one of the first things I ask my clients is, would you date yourself? based on how, you know, your insecurities, your secret fetishes or, you know, crazy things that you do, would you date you? And a lot of the women say no. And so it's starting from there and then moving into, okay, how to date, you know, how to keep him and how to break up with him and then get over him if you have to. Yeah. And the, 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 the thing I'm seeing behind a lot of that is that, uh, once you you know kind of find your purpose in in that is that the more authentic you are, the easier it it, it gets. And I think a lot of people you know like you're saying hold back on that on that facade of trying to be perfect. Um, and then they they just keep getting stuck. You know like right now my perfect interview and my dog just shaked her head and like. That's okay. <laughs> my dog. <laughs> being um, I put her. I put her on an interview, but she's already laid back down. It's true, but it's, and and what's interesting is it's not only in relationships; it's also in business. And I saw that with my YouTube videos because at first, yeah, I was the expert with the fitness stuff. I was the expert. I was always like the fun, bubbly blonde. But um, with the dating advice, when I'm asking you to be vulnerable. I realized that I needed to be vulnerable too, but for a long time I wasn't. I was too afraid to. I was. I, I need, felt like I needed to be the expert. I needed to be perfect. And I did one video called um, uh, "Getting a, Breaking Up with an Ex: Ten Mistakes" or "Getting Back with an Ex: Ten Mistakes I Did That You Shouldn't." And I was getting over a really hard breakup, and I decided to shoot a video. It was kind of to him so that he knew that I realized what I had done wrong. And I started crying in the video. And I was talking about the mistakes I made. And then I turned it around and, and said, and this is what you need to do, and this is what you shouldn't do. So I was vulnerable, relatable, aspirational. And then I, and, and, and because of that video, my numbers on YouTube, my followers, my comments went up dramatically. People were saying, wow, I really saw you for the first time. You know, before I always thought, oh, I could never work with her. She's too perfect. Or she's, I'm not saying that I am perfect in any capacity. Um, but this is feedback that I was getting of, I, she can't relate to me. And then when they actually saw me, it was, oh, wow. I, I, I am a lot like her. And then when my publisher for this last book said, we love you, we love the title, Screwing the Rules, we love the angle because it's sort of different than ever, any other dating book out there, but you're not relatable, you're too, too perfect, so we're not going to buy the book. And I said, I, I believe me, I have messed up so many times, that's why I've been proposed to nine times and divorced twice by the age of 27. And they said, show us. 
So I start every chapter with my own mistakes. And I'm very, when I was writing this book, I was sobbing when I was writing some of these personal stories because I was very, very real and raw. And that's what differentiates this book from any other dating book. And that's why I sold this book to my publisher because I was willing to go there. And I decided to not be afraid, even though it was scary. Um, but I also created a, a bottom. It's a false bottom that, sh that is my decision as to how deep and vulnerable I'm going to go. So I am in control of letting go. And that's something that in business you need to be also. Yeah, I think the um, as you kind of go through it, it's like it gets easier because you get to be yourself in yeah, whatever. Exactly. In, yeah, and, and, and from that, it, it, you just get to be yourself all the time. And then... It's hard to be yourself at first, though. When we're so used to being perfect, it is mm -hmm. really hard to be yourself because we get used to this caricature and this like thing that we put out there, and that's easy. But yeah, the, it's uh, breaking that wall. Yeah, break, breaking the wall. I, I wanted to, to – that's kind of the question I was going to ask is what's something someone can maybe do like if their wall is really big for them? Um, it, just to start to take down, you know, one piece of the wall at a time. What's what's something they can they can practice with? Well, it's starting to tap into your core. You know, you need to allow yourself to feel in order to open your heart, and in order to feel, you have to think about the things that are emotional for you. You need to think about, you know, what is it that made you that impassioned you to do this business in the first place because there was something there it's like you know when you're talking to someone and they say oh I'm an attorney oh that's great it must be a tough job yeah it's tough but what about why did you decide to be an attorney in the first place let's go back to that initial passion that hit that need to be an attorney so whatever it is for you Go back to that moment, and I think it's perfect when you say, what's your purpose, and when did you realize that purpose? And although for me, there wasn't a moment that I realized my purpose necessarily, I can go back and realize my pain. And I can realize, I can remember all of my heartache and heartbreak and mistakes and shame and extract the, the lesson from all of that. And then take that and say, okay, now I'm not just going to sit and look and feel like shit about myself because of all the mistakes I've made. So instead, I'm going to try and 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 have a bummer turn this bene this bummer into a benefit. So I call it bummers with benefit. <laughs> so what is the benefit of this bummer? Well, I learned this lesson. Okay, now that I have this lesson, now what do I do with it? Or maybe I can teach it. And then pulling all of these, you know, all, I have this cloud of bummers. So if I'm able to pull the benefits out of each one, and then I have this whole huge thing of benefits here, and I can come back up and I can teach all of these and really create something that's powerful because, and, and then connect with the customer, connect through my own stories. That's why people want to coach with me is because I connect with them. So why would people want to work with you? Because you're perfect? Maybe that's what will attract them at first, but what's going to keep them coming back? You know, my clients, you have to buy a 10-pack of sessions in order to work with me. Um, and oftentimes at the beginning people are like, I don't think I'm going to need 10 sessions. And I say, no, believe me, you, you're going to need 10 sessions. And then they end up re-upping and re-upping again. And it's not because they're still so messed up in the dating space. It's because they continue to have takeaway in dating, in relationships, and in life because of how authentic I am with them. So it's not just signing the client, getting the deal, it's keeping them coming back and having them be able to relate to you. You know, some of my clients feel like we're best friends. Like literally, they feel like they, like we are very, very close tight personal friends and it's because they have opened up to me for the first time. And the reason why they opened up to me is because I opened up to them. It's something called, I'll show you mine, then you show me yours. I need to create an environment of safety and trust so that you can then feel safe and trust in me to share who you are. 
and it's it's the same thing that happens in the dating space and it's it's also you know what happens with the media you know with the media I share my own stories I don't do it all the time because there's a balance because I'm still the expert and I still need to stay on that expert platform but there is still the component of me being real and working my ass off I mean it's I work all the time I was just I had outreach last night from a company in um, uh, where was he South Africa asking if I would be interested in shooting a video for his website and he would pay me to do that I've, I'm, a, I'm hired as a television spokesperson and, and a spokesperson in general for companies and consulting and stuff so he emailed me at 930 at night and I was sitting watching TV and responding to emails because that's what I do that's what you do as an entrepreneur and you know he said I don't why are you what time is it in LA and I said it's nice <laughs> but you know I'm I see your email and I want you to know that if you email me and I see your email I'm going to respond I am that person and that's also why the media depends on me for expert quotes because they know that if they get a last minute assignment from their editor they can contact me and they will have a quote within two hours and sometimes it'll take longer if I have coaching sessions all day but I'll email them and say hey can't get back to you until tomorrow is that okay but I work all the time like that's part of what has to be your passion in business I, I live and I breathe my work and yeah. it's an essential I was going to say it, it when when you're living and breathing, you know, your work, but you're coming from a a place that you love to do it, and yeah. it's a it's a it's a lot easier. Um, and I don't want people to get caught up and think, oh, uh, now I have to work at nine thirty, and 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 then they have to work all the time. But I think the key word there is work, and then it's not. You probably don't think of it as always as work. You're just thinking, of, I get to help more people, and at the I, same I, time, they get to pay me. But exactly, you know, the more I get out there, the more I do interviews, the more I um, am an expert on different websites, the more I write articles for free for these different websites, the more my name is out there, the more links to my website, the more people see me, the more clients I get. So it's that, and then it also allows me to take a week off if I want to. You know, I get up in the morning and yeah, I check my email from bed, I do, but then I <laughs> my breakfast. I feed my dog, I go on a hike for an hour and a half, I come wow. back, I have lunch, and then I start my day. So, you know, it's not like I'm working from 7 a.m. to midnight. If I am on deadline for a book or something else, yeah, sometimes I do. But every single day is different. Every day. Today, I woke up, I made breakfast, I hung out with my dog, I went and had a personal training session, I went grocery shopping, I was home by 12, I had two coaching clients, and then I did this. And I'm going to be working for the rest of the evening. Every day is different. I dictate my day. And that's what's great. I decide what I'm going to do. I decide how slammed I'm going to be, how back-to-back -back my appointments are. However, I always make sure that I leave time for media. Because if I want to build my business, and this is this is why I call myself a media whore and why I teach it to people, the media is an essential. It is why I'm able to sell my books. It's why I'm able to get on television. It's why production companies are contacting me. Everything I do feeds each each other. So my YouTube videos feed into my articles on my website which feed into articles that I put on other people's websites because if I'm going to contribute a free article that I write for you I want to embed a link into the video and then a client might see that and they see a video of me it's not just an article it's a video they can relate to me they see me talking to them a production company sees it so it's like it goes in circles and then suddenly it's a web of exposure <laughs> and it's it sounds really complicated because there are a lot of components to it but similar to being your authentic self once you get the hang of it it's easy it's just how to create the strategy you know how to spend sometimes I spend an entire day just doing social media you know scheduling tweets putting up photos doing all these it's a day and then another day I just write if I sold a book or if I'm if I'm writing a book proposal I'll write all day and I block myself out but I'm very very organized in terms of my time 
Yeah, I think that's really important to to mention is that you need to block out some time just to focus on the one thing that you want to get accomplished that is going to feed that web or feed you know the structure of, of your business and not try to be all over the place you know and jump from this and jump from that and jump to this and just do one thing and do it really well for that specific period of time. Even um, if it's just one hour. I mean I have an ongoing to-do list that is cons and my calendar I block out my own time write this article, you know, do tweets, return these phone calls. So I'm very focused and on purpose and as an entrepreneur you have to be because if I don't get out of bed and do my work, I'm not making any money. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wish the dog would uh I wish uh, I wish my dog would uh, make some money. <laughs> would contribute. <laughs> yeah, they 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 do suck a lot of time and she <laughs> she's she's edging me right now. She's like, I probably want to go potty. Um so as we're kind of like winding down here, um Laurel, how, you know, what's a a good piece of advice who someone who, you know, kind of knows um, they have that light that they're going towards. Well, I don't want to say it like that, <laughs> but they have the uh, the um, uh, that that drive to do something, and they know where they want to go, mm -hmm. um, and they just haven't made that big leap or that leap of faith. What's some advice you can give them, you know, to be successful in that? Stop being perfect. You know, it's it, perfection is oftentimes an excuse for avoidance. And if you are, well, my website's not perfect. Well, I don't have whatever ready. Well, I don't, I, I, I feel inauthentic because I don't feel like I'm the expert yet. Just enough of the, of the need for perfection. Own your expertise. I am a dating coach. I was a dating coach before I made money dating coaching. You know, so you have to own that expertise and then Put it out there. Obviously, you don't want some schlocky website that looks like a ninth grader. Well, sometimes ninth graders are pretty awesome. Those <laughs> oh, ninth, ninth graders are pretty good now. <laughs> yeah, nine-year-old did. You know, you can design really great websites on Wix. I have learned that's something that I learned that I now teach my media whore clients is when I had Quickie Chick, I spent fifteen thousand dollars on a company to design my website, design my newsletters, design my Instagram, design all of these things, and I was pouring money out. I hired a PR firm. I did all these, you know, and I didn't realize I can do all of this myself. And I hired for my for screwing the rules. I hired a great designer through Elance in India, and she did my website for I think fifteen hundred dollars. I have a site that I'm building now called Femininity Expert, and I'm doing that on Wix. I'm doing that myself, you know. So there are so many different levels, and I've made so many mistakes. And yeah, I have a I have a publicist right now because my book just came out, but. I'm getting just as much media or more than they are because of my own contacts and my own outreach and my own drive. So it's basically, you know, enough of the perfection, number one. And number two, if you're having a hard time putting yourself out there and pouring yourself out, be it to the consumer, be it to the media, be it to whoever it is, you know, divorce yourself from yourself. Because it's hard to be like, I'm so great. You should hire me. It's really hard to say that, but if you can divorce you from you, so this is Laurel the personal, and this is Laurel the professional, then I can be like, I'm a dating coach, and I'm, an, you know, I'm internationally known, I'm on Good Morning America regularly, I'm on the Today Show, I'm on Glamour.com, I'm on Self.com, an article on Shape.com came out on me today. That is Laurel the whore, right? And, and that is a very different person than Laurel the, the person, than Laurel the individual. Although I do bridge the two when I am expressing my vulnerability in order to for people to relate to me, I still have to be that person who is not afraid to whore myself out. Yeah, to get get out there and get your message and I think that's, you know, my purpose is to help people find their purpose. So, um yeah, I, I just wanted to say thank you um, for bringing that up. <clears throat> now, where can you know what if if someone's thinking about they need a dating coach or help with media? What would you describe? How would a, what would a perfect customer look like to you so they can identify that? Um, a perfect customer for dating coaching for me is someone 
and really actually for anything, is someone who is open. Someone who says, look, I know I have a weakness. I don't know what that weakness is necessarily, or maybe I do, and I need help. And I am willing to be open and put myself in your hands and get out of my box and challenge myself and know that you have been there and done it and you're going to hold my hand and help me along the way. The way I look at it is sometimes like I am, if you are walking up a ladder, this is for my dating coaching clients and my media whore clients, you're walking up a ladder and it's scary because you don't know what's up there, you might slip. I am beneath you with my hands on your ass pushing you up. If you slip, I will turn into a cradle and catch you. And then I'm going to push you back up, and then I'm going to catch you. So it's this constant. Um, so it's my perfect client is someone who says, you know, I need help, and I'm open, and I'm, I'm willing to put my money where my dreams are because I'm sick of wasting my time. And I'm not going to waste your time, and I want to be as efficient and effective as possible, so enough of the bullshit of what I've been doing help me make a mid-course correction or get on the course and the path in the first place because I'm sick of doing things wrong. And, and this way of doing things clearly isn't working or else I'd be there by now. So I'm going to trust that you're different screwing the rules way of doing things will work. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I, li I like your analogy. The analogy um, I use is, uh, as a life coach, is I, I use the bumpers on the, the bowling alley, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm there to kind of keep you, you know, in line and going towards what, where you want to go. Yeah. So I, I think that's perfect. Where can, uh, where can people uh, connect with you, Laurel? Uh, they can go to my website, screwingtherules.com. You can also go to laurelhouse.com, and you can find me on Twitter at nogameslove. Awesome. I appreciate it. Or you can just email me directly. I mean, screw having to go through my website. If you want to. <laughs> so you can email me at laurel at screwingtherules.com or laurel at laurelhouse.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on today. I really appreciate it. I think you've given some some great advice. And if anybody, if you feel you connected with Laurel, you know, reach out. You know, she'll she'll definitely uh, uh, push your ass up there. So, <laughs> okay. Well, th thanks so much, Laurel. Thank you. <laughs>